Real quick, the contest winners for the painting and the print are announced at the end of this video. So if you wanna find out if you won, uh, stay tuned to the end and I'm gonna announce those winners for the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. <laughs> What's up y'all, I'm 10 Hundred. I'm an artist from Seattle, Washington. A few days ago, my channel hit 10,000 subscribers. And as a special little occasion, I put out uh, a video and in that video I asked for questions for a Q&A session. So that's what this is. I read through all like 400 plus comments on that. So I got some questions here and I'm gonna do my best to answer them. So let's jump right into it. I'm gonna try to be, try to answer these kind of quick so that we can kind of get, get to as many questions as possible. I'm gonna do a bunch of questions here on YouTube and then a bunch more extra questions as an exclusive over on my Patreon. So if I didn't get to your question on this one, I'm sorry, it might be on the Patreon one, but there was, there was a lot of questions, so. First question, Magoosh from Austria asks, when and how did you become? Magoosh? <laughs> yeah, Magoosh, yeah. Anyway, Magoosh says from Austria, uh, when and how did you become a full-time artist? Uh, I became a full-time artist with no other job maybe like five years ago or so. Before that, I was working a full-time job at Guitar Center. How did I become a full-time artist? I started, you know, selling more paintings and getting more work. And eventually I like went from five days a week down to four days a week, down to three days a week, and just trickled it down to the point where I was working like one day every two weeks. And it just became silly for me to have that job. JD King from Indonesia says, <laughs> what will you do if you have 10 hundred hams? <laughs> I'd pick up 10 hundred paintbrushes and just increase my productivity even more. DJ from the USA says, have you ever considered incorporating a more natural element like clouds in your background? Also, I just subscribed for the t-shirt subscription. I saw some of those designs and I knew I needed them myself. Thank you so much, DJ. Uh, he's talking about the t-shirt of the month club on my website. You get a t-shirt at discounted rate every month pretty cool. Yeah, I've incorporated natural elements into my backgrounds like this. Granville from Canada. How did you develop your style? Who inspires, inspired you and what inspires you? Do you do anything that allows your art to happen like meditation as an example? How did I develop my style? That's actually the, as I was reading through this comments, that's the number one question that everybody kept asking. It's hard to like really pinpoint how exactly I developed my style. Just making art all the time, all the time and you develop a new little trick and you're like, oh, I like how that worked out and it becomes a part of your artistic repertoire. But I guess really like I used to try and draw comic book style I loved comic book art I was copying my favorite comic book illustrators and that was like early high school and then I got kind of tired of that and I decided around maybe like 18 years old that I just wanted to be like draw like a little kid basically like have the imagination of a little kid, create these crazy monsters, create worlds, tell stories with my art, and I wanted to focus more on the story aspect, and hopefully each image can inspire the imagination of each viewer to like put their own story into it. Taking what's expected, like uh, proportions, and like the way that you draw a face, and like tweaking those elements. Like what if I move the eyes farther apart? And what if I made the mouth smaller? And what if I made the head bigger? And some things work and some things don't and some things click. Who inspires you and what inspires you? That was also like this, the top question that I got asked. Um, I'm inspired by street art and, and anime and cartoons and children's literature and comic books and my wife and actually all of you guys like all the super awesome comments that you leave telling me that like my videos are making an impact on your life that just makes me want to like make more so that I can continue connecting with you and just like it's this awesome like positive feedback loop. When you're an artist it's a really cool way to live your your life because you're always looking at the world around you uh, looking for inspiration and and seeking out beauty in the world around you and it really like changes your perspective on the way you look at the world and the meditation part I don't meditate <laughs> I don't think I could do it 
Nathan Bryan, USA, I found your videos the other day and I think I binged all of the mural videos. Your work is incredible. How did you get into painting and how did you extend that into making YouTube videos? Uh, thank you so much for watching my videos. How did I get into painting? I've done art since I was a little kid, always loved it, but there was a big moment for me when basically I was like, I was drinking way too much, doing way too many drugs. Everything was like spiraling downward. I kind of hit my rock bottom moment and I called my dad and I was like, dude, I gotta come home. Like, I'm a drug addict, I'm an alcoholic. I gotta get out of here. And I went home back to my family house in Michigan for nine months and got clean, got sober. And while I was there, I started, I didn't have any like anything to do. I didn't have any friends. I had a lot of free time and I just started making paintings and I would post them online and then like people would buy them. Like maybe for like 50 bucks or like, you know, not very much, but people were buying them. And I was like, whoa, this is crazy. This is weird. And I just like kept doing that. And then through social media, through online stuff, like the first gallery owner was like, hey, what, you should do a show at my gallery. And I was like, cool. And then down the road, my first mural client was like, hey, come paint a mural at our business. And it all was very natural, very unexpected. It wasn't like me deciding one day, like, I'm gonna be an artist. It just started from a place of like, art makes me feel good. I'm going through a hard time right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do this because it makes me happy and it's what I love to do. And everything else after that kind of came to be. And then Nathan also asked, and how did that extend to making YouTube videos? To me, YouTube videos were a great way to share my art with more people, like, especially on the murals. Like when I do a mural, maybe that community or that corporate office or that business and their patrons can enjoy my art. But if you're not there and you're not looking at it, like you can't see what I'm doing. And for me, it was just like, I wanna tell this story. I wanna share my art with more people and see what kind of response I get. And YouTube was a great vessel for that. Making videos is something that I'm really passionate about and I really like to do. And I'm trying to learn more about it. I came in like with zero experience and as a complete novice and through trial and error and YouTube tutorials and you guys' comments, I kind of am continuing to try and make my videos better. So yeah. Anonymous, Anonymous <laughs> says, what do you love most about being able to take your talent and creativity and turn it into a career? Uh, the thing I love most about it is that I mostly get to do what I like to do on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, I love making art. I love connecting with people. I love running my shop. Usually when clients hit me up, they ask me for my style. So I don't have to deal with a lot of like dumb commissions. Uh, I just am really passionate about art and I'm really passionate about being creative and sharing my story and it's so, so very rewarding to do what you're passionate about. When I had a regular day job, it felt like a lot harder work, but now that I am like my own business, I work way harder than I ever did at any day job, but uh, it never really feels like work. Like I'm working 24 seven, but I'm also like never working. So that's probably the best part. Oh, here's another tough name. Uh, Joken Zubizareta Otieza from Basque Country. Hey, Tan, I'm so impressed by your art. Your drawings and murals are so cool. Your style reminds me a little bit of Felix Coolgraves. Uh, check out his YouTube channel. I haven't heard of Felix. I'll have to look into that. Uh, have you ever done any project outside the USA? Is there any place in Europe where we can see one of your murals? How will... <laughs> Hope you will reach a million subscribers. I hope so too. I don't have anything in Europe yet. I think I just mentioned that. I would love to come to Europe. I have work in Brazil and Japan and then all over the United States, but that's, that's it for now. So if you've got any opportunities in your country, holla at your boy. <laughs> Poppy, United Kingdom. I just recently subscribed and been watching your videos nonstop because of your delightful personality. Thank you. <laughs> When you say, I'm going to go smile quietly to myself, oh my goodness, what an adorable expression for how joyful you feel. It made me smile quietly to myself too. I hope you know how talented you are to be able to work this hard and to get to the point in your art where when someone looks at it, they're just in awe of how incredible it is. 
You and your art just make me feel wonderful. Can I just say real quick, like, thank you so much for this super positive message. And I read, like, 400 of these comments, and this is what, like, all of them were like. Like, I'm not an emotional person, but I was, like, feeling that, like, oh, am I about to cry right now? <laughs> like, you guys are, made me feel so good, and, you know, even across my whole channel on all my videos, 99.9% .9 of all the comments that I get are, like, super positive like this. People say that YouTube comment sections are really toxic, but I think in this community, it's just like overwhelmingly positive. So thank you guys for that. Anyway, uh, on to her questions. Is there a piece of artwork that you are proudest of and why? I think as far as murals go, that 165 foot Long Beach mural, I'm pretty proud of that. It was so huge. I think I did a good job. Um, so I really like that one. Chris Erskine says, from Canada, so what kind of stuff are you selling in your store? Uh, my shop statics it's a half like art streetwear boutique half art gallery and the gallery has new shows every single month i curate it i bring in a bunch of artists that i think are dope we have different themes i sell t-shirts and long sleeves and hoodies and skateboards and women's leggings and snowboards and prints and mugs and stickers and a while ago i figured out that if i can take my art and make it more affordable like making taking my art and turning it into a t-shirt or taking my art and turning it into a sticker I want to make my art more accessible so that no matter what your income bracket is, if you like my art, hopefully there's some some way that you can support me. If you guys want to check any of that out and buy a t-shirt or anything, that would be a great way to support me. The Mr. Fruits from US. How do you transfer your mural from your sketchbook to a wall and keep everything in proportion? Uh, there's like three methods. There's freehanding it, there's using a grid, and there's using a projector. Those are the three methods that I use. I made a full video about like each method and the pros and cons over on my Patreon if you want to check that out at all. Test, test, one, two. My, my recorder stopped working. Matt Genos from the UK. Question, what do you do to find inspiration when you feel like you're out of ideas? Hmm. So much of what I do nowadays is for somebody or for some client or for some company and they have their own dreams and visions and and goals that they want to achieve with the art and they inject what they want and that is kind of a automatic built-in inspiration for me because you know it's kind of easy to get stuck in a rut there's so many questions about my style but sometimes i like to get away from my style and stretch myself as an artist and do things i've never done before so that really helps me sometimes i i just don't feel it i'm exhausted i've been working non-stop and i know that i probably should be drawing or working on some projects and i just like i can't and i think it's important sometimes to like take that day and recharge yourself and not beat yourself up for not being like on fire for art at that moment but it's also kind of important to try and push push through those times a little bit don't burn yourself out but also don't not make art <laughs> um, sometimes just putting that pencil to the paper and not putting any pressure on yourself and just seeing what happens whether it sucks or whether it's awesome all that's beneficial your your failures I think are more important than your successes because you can learn from your failures and try not to make the same mistake over and over again. Um, Bados from Canada, what's the highest amount of paintings you've done in one day? Four. Uh, Svetka, Svet, Sveta Kliuchnik. I'm from Ukraine. I really like your art. It's amazing. I want to ask what inspires you because your art reminds me of my favorite anime, Tekkon Concrete. I love Tekkon Concrete. It's my favorite anime. Incredible, incredible environments, art style, huge inspiration to me. When I found that anime, I was kind of already traveling down that path. And then when I did find it, I was like, dude, this is like kind of like what I do and I love it. Andre Dorsey, USA, what's your favorite food place when going to Pike Place? <laughs> yeah, I love these kind of questions that aren't just so art centric. I really like Poroshki Poroshki. I'm on a diet where I don't really eat much carbs at all, so I haven't had it in a long time, but that place is bomb and there's always a super long line. Lumion, Norway, what inspires your color choices? Um, 
I love color. Uh, my my grandpa and my dad were both born in Colombia. My grandpa is 100% Colombian. My dad is half Colombian. And I've, we're from the islands off the coast of Colombia, like super tropical, pure blue crystal waters, like paradise. So I feel like maybe some of those tropical colors, tropical vibes are like in my blood. On the other side of that, like I don't have an art education. I never went to art school. So maybe like, maybe an art school artist gets trained to like limit their palette and focus their art. And I'm just like, like all the colors, I want them all, I want to use them all. I wish there was more colors. Linnea T. Anderson from Sweden. If you got one billion dollars, what would be the first thing you buy? <laughs> probably some houses, but that's kind of a boring answer. You probably want to uh, talk about flashy things or something. Um, what would I buy? I pretty much spend all my money on like making t-shirts and making underwear and making weird products with my art on it. I love doing that. I love like turning my art into affordable things that are cool for people. And I would probably just like ramp that up. Like I would make some crazy products. Um, and you know, with an unlimited budget, I think I could make some really weird, awesome, cool products that are just like super unique. So I'd probably spend, spend some of that billion <laughs> on, uh, on making some crazy products for you guys. Uh, Nico Cow, USA. My question would be, how long did it take for you to be confident in your work? How long did it take for me to be confident in my work? <laughs> I, I still am not. I still struggle with that, you know, like the self-doubt and the, and the fear of failure. Every single project I do, I go into it with like a decent amount of anxiety <laughs> um, about not being good enough and about being an imposter and about like, why do these people trust me? But um, that goes down a little bit o over time. I, I've done so many things that I know that I can make something, <laughs> whether it be good or not. Like I'm the type of person I finish a painting and then like the moment I'm done with it, I'm just like, eh, I could do better. I want to do better. I want to paint another one. I want to be like be better and always be working towards making my skills develop. Uh, Wyatt West from USA. Hey man, just wanted to ask about how to keep being positive and motivated, even if someone like me and you're struggling to make rent every month. Keep up the great work. Yeah, well. You got to keep focused on why you're doing this in the first place. And hopefully it's because you love art and you love being creative. And when you make art, there's nothing else in the world that can make you feel that way. Um, so it's got to it's got to come from a passionate place. And hopefully when you're making art, that's like one of your happiest times. That's how it feels for me. Flip side to that coin is that like if the art's going great and the life is falling apart around you, that's going to automatically be a super stressful situation. So you, you got to be a little bit cautious and handle the life stuff. Back when I had a 40 hour a week job, I would work eight hours, get off immediately, go paint till like two or three in the morning sleep a little bit, go back to work. And it was an absolute grind, but I knew I had to take care of my life stuff and earn a paycheck to like pay for rent and food. But I also knew that I could not live without making my art. So don't abandon one thing for the other. Try to find that balance. Take care of your life stuff, but also try to find time to be creative. And hopefully it'll all pay off in the end. Jill, and the flying eggplant. I wanted to ask you about your store statics. How running the store changed your day-to-day -day work? Do you feel you have enough time to create and run the store besides being an amazing accomplishment on its own? Did it also provide the way to some more goals you had in mind? And on the same subject, what is your next goal and dream? Opening statics opened a lot of doors and it also made it just an insane time management situation for me. Um, I'm there almost every day and I can get some work done between customers, but it's always kind of splitting my attention. I edit videos there, I make paintings there, and it's it's a ton of work. Being a small business owner and like basically like one employee, me, <laughs> um, is, is a lot of work. It's one of the hardest things I've ever done. It's one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. It provides me with a little bit more of a stable income than just being an artist waiting for my next gig. But uh, yeah, d time management, is becoming more and more and more of an issue for me as my social media and YouTube continue to grow, as my shop progresses, as my freelance art career continues, and as I need to also focus on my family. 
and my wife um it's it's that's the that's the tricky part but so far so good i think what's my next goal what is my next goal i just want to i just want to continue to have fun and do what i like to do and and paint and visit more places and broaden my mind and increase my skills i'm in a pretty i feel like i'm in a pretty good spot right now because i am able to sort of support myself and do what i like to do and i feel like when you're like too poor it's really really stressful and when you're too popular it's also really really stressful and i feel like i'm in this like zone in the middle that's like the happy zone anyway thank you guys so much for watching hope this was uh this was fun for you guys and not too boring um there's more questions over on my patreon this is like the the edited version for youtube i'll do some bonus content over on patreon the winners of the contest the winner of this painting from the usa hold up i, I went to a random comment selector website so it's all fair all unbiased but the winner of this painting is dart bull 24 he said usa dude i love your your work i'm literally floored by your style and the fact that you're down to earth and positive is such a huge bonus my favorite video so far has been the 165 foot wall you did in long beach and your trips to japan i spent over 20 hours in the last month watching all your videos since i found your channel i would be honored to hang one of your originals in my place either way keep it up stay positive and an inspiration to us all wow Thank you, random comment picker. That was like the best one you could have picked. Thank you so much, Dart Bowl. Um, hit me up through the contact form on my website. Let's get your shipping information. I'll try and uh, I'll try and contact you as well. I gotta I gotta find your comment in all those comments on the last video. And then the winner of the Prince, the international viewer, uh, is David Tornius from Sweden. He said, "Damn, found this channel way too late." So much good vibes. Always nice to check out when I'm having a bad day or is, or I'm out of inspiration. Keep on hammering, dude, and congrats on the 10K. You definitely deserve it. Thank you so much, David Tornius. Tornius. You got a couple prints coming your way. Hit me up through my website. I'll also try and comment you. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. You can subscribe to the channel if you want. If you're not already subscribed, leave a like, ring the bell, check out my Patreon, check out my website. I'm out. That was grueling. That was a lot of questions. Thank you so much. Peace.